this uh, one of our first guests that's standing too. I like. Are you standing? I am standing. I have the I like uh, stand up desk, and I have this like uh, studio in my apartment. It's like a walk in closet that I turned into a studio for the purposes of podcast stuff like this. So thanks for having me, guys. Dude, Dude great to all, see you. First of all, I mean, you were fired up at the home run derby when we talked to you. you were yeah, I definitely was like probably like eight beers deep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's go. Uh, yeah, you were, you were good looking time. good too. Yeah, you were yeah, looking good, good too. You were looking sharp. I yeah. Mean, oh, he's always well dressed. Yeah, you were even fired now. up though. I was, I was. We were talking to you, and I was like, "All right." Yeah. Well, we that's why we on. said we were like, "Oh, we haven't had Keith on yet, and we've been up for a few months." So, all right, yeah. Keith, let's get right to our therapy session, dude, because we've been looking at your tweets too the past twenty four hours, and <laughs> fans want to hear it. Let's start with the current disaster that is the New York Yankees. So, when I say, "Where are you at?" Like, what are you expecting the rest of the year? Is Judge going to save them? Oh, here, we're showing one of your tweets right now. Bro, the Yankees are so bad, it's exhausting. I have nothing left for them. Mets win, take the series some life, if you want to believe. Okay, so talk us through what's wrong. Can Judge save them? And what do they do at the trade deadline? No, nah, Judge can't save these guys. Judge, we don't even know if Judge is going to be more than a potential DH next month, and he's going to be expected to carry. It sucks. It sucks. The year that he's named captain, they're going to blame this season on the Dodgers. They're going to blame the wall uh, in right field at Dodger Stadium. And <laughs> this lineup shouldn't be that bad. It's baseball, right? It's it's one thing when you lose your quarterback in football and the offense can't get first downs, can't find the end zone. You lose one guy on offense and everybody turns into a zero. That's why I say it's exhausting. I got nothing left for them because I watch the game every night. I'm on WFAN after the game every night. That's also why I included the Mets in there. Because I'm like, all right, I, I don't like the Mets, but I guess they have some life. At least watching them play, they hit. And Verlander pitched well last night, if you guys want to talk about that. But for the most part, it's the home of the Yankees. John Sterling and Susan Waldman call the game on our station. And Yankee fans call in to complain about Hal Steinbrenner, Brian Cashman, Aaron Boone, and the New York Yankees. Right now is another low point, and we thought we had all the low points of the season. But now it's just like we're searching for anything. Uh, we need Judge back. We need this deadline to improve the team. And we need these guys to wake up. They struck out 42 times in the series against the Angels. They're making every pitcher look like an ace. doesn't matter who it is. I probably could get a couple outs pitching against this Yankee lineup. So Sean Casey didn't fix him when he was Sean hired? Casey? Uh, <laughs> shout out to the mayor. Shout out to the mayor, first off. He's a great guy. Uh, but, I mean, listen, you can throw him guy. into the heat of New York as a hitting coach when your best hitter is not playing. That's rough, and, and Sean's an awesome dude, but it's just, what's the, we, we've, we've beaten this kind of today a little bit, but what's the fix? The trade deadline's almost here, 10 days away or so, a couple weeks away. What's the fix? Do they sell Yankee, not what the Yankees do? They're do not they try sell. to bring in people? And then you got like Carlos Rodon blowing kisses. What was the <laughs> post headline? Kiss my ass or something? What did yeah. it say? Like, kiss yeah, my that's ass That's on the cover something? of the newspapers. Great. Um, luckily, that happened in Anaheim and not the Bronx. The Yankees aren't going to sell because you have Garrett Cole, who might win the AL Cy Young this year. That'll probably be the only trophy we take home. Then you have Aaron Judge, the first year of his nine-year, $40 million a year contract. And you still have guys like Giancarlo Stanton, Anthony Rizzo, DJ LeMayu, who are supposed to be in the prime of their careers, but it looks like they're aging. It looks like they're at the end of their careers fast. So they're not going to sell. They're going to try and stack the team. But right now it's it's kind of confusing because on one hand, they say they need a left fielder, starting pitching, a catcher, bullpen help. But then on the other hand, we're reading about them trying to be under the luxury tax threshold. Which one is it? Are you going all in? Are you going to you know make the moves to bolster the roster and find some hitters and strengthen the team? Or are you going to try and finagle some money things right now? That's that's also why the fans are pissed off. They're, they're coming home tomorrow, and they will have a $25 million patch over the pinstripes that says Star Insurance. But they need to get under the luxury tax threshold. <laughs> Nothing drives me crazier than that. In my mind, because I did some podcast appearances yesterday on some Yankee shows, I said the Yankee fans and some fans of other teams that are big market spenders shouldn't even know what luxury tax means. There is they no don't. hard salary <laughs> cap. So for the Yankees to even toy with that and then nowadays try to blame like, oh, I don't want to pick 10 spots further back in the draft and, and be punished for it. Th that is ridiculous. The fact that they ever have to worry about that. We all know. I don't need to see the Yankees books. They make so much profit 
every seven single year. $7 billion. Dollars. They are the most profitable uh, on the road. They just went on the road and had 40,000 fans at each game. They turned road stadiums into home stadiums, and then the fans just turn against them and boom, and then you got Rodon <laughs> blowing kisses. Uh, he's been terrible, but he's got to figure that out. Uh, what I look at with the Yankees is it's just a disconnect, right? A disconnect from top to bottom. A month ago, Hal Steinbrenner comes out and he says, huh, I don't know why the fans are upset. It's only the third week of June. Well, now it's the third week of July. Are you understanding why we're pissed off? You're understanding why we're upset? We're exhausted, man. We haven't won a series since we beat the worst team in baseball, the Oakland A's, who also got a game off the Yankees. They don't sweep teams. Uh, they don't hit and they don't pitch. And when they do pitch, the bullpen gives it up. And Aaron Boone says the same exact thing every night. The fan base is just like really lost right now. And I'm one of the fans that gets to speak on a platform like WFAN. I try and connect with people and I try and speak for the fans. But there's just nothing else to say. They got to play better. We need Judge back. They need to make moves at the deadline. This isn't acceptable. They were in the ALCS last year. They should have stacked the deck to get back. In my opinion, the American League is still wide open. We don't know who the clear-cut favorite this year is in the AL. So why can't the Yankees make a couple moves like they have the last few deadlines, whether it was Joey Gallo or Andrew Benintendi or Anthony Rizzo? Make some moves. Stack the deck again. You get Judge back, and maybe you can make a run. Maybe you can get to the last wild-card spot. Face the Minnesota Twins, who are our best pals when it comes to the postseason. <laughs> and then, you know, who knows? You, you know, you can possibly advance in what you call a crapshoot. This new postseason format with like the Phillies getting to the World Series. Maybe it could happen, but right now, I don't believe it can happen. I told fans last night I'm off the roller coaster. I can't go up and down and up and down with this team. Perfect game. And then they blow games. And then uh 4th of July, they win two games on the Orioles. Then they split the series. Like I'm off the roller coaster. I'm always gonna be a Yankee fan. Look at my wall. Like if you actually could see the amount of Yankee stuff I own, and you guys saw me at the all-star game home run derby i'm dripping in yankees gear but i look like a clown right now with all this yankee stuff <laughs> who's the, the most way, take it easy on the twins okay because i started that trend so stop it <laughs> yeah but the they're, problem minnesota is nice a long time 20 ago. years ago yeah. <laughs> they're nice guys they always they cooperate in the postseason with the oh, yanks oh man minnesota nice baby who's the most disappointing new york yankee this season anthony rizzo it's over Vol close. over Volpe with the hype, over Donaldson, Volpe's, over Stanton. Volpe's 22 years old, and, and Volpe skipped AAA. You know, I, I know there was a lot of hype and a marketing plan with Volpe being the local kid who met Derek Jeter when he was young, but, you know, what, what did you expect out of a rookie that they move in the lineup? And no, it's Anthony Rizzo. On Mandalorian, Anthony Rizzo, Mandalorian bobblehead night, I didn't get one of those. I've got every <laughs> other bobblehead. I've got... Let me see. I've got... Uh, I got literally like a hundred bobbleheads. I could keep going if you guys have time. As uh, you're Glaber, talking, yeah. Glaber Torres, uh, CC Sabathia. Uh, yeah. So on Mandalorian bobblehead night for Anthony Rizzo, this guy goes off. And uh, a lot of fans go back to Memorial Day weekend when Fernando Tatis Jr. took a step back to first base and kind of knocked his head. And they're saying he hasn't been the same since then. It's deeper than that. He's in the worst stretch of his career. He can't buy a hit. He's not hitting home runs. And he's the guy that we look to as like second in command to Aaron Judge. They're best buds. Their dogs are best friends, right? They're, you know, supposed to hold each other down. When Judge goes out, you expect Rizzo to rise. And he's been a zero. And a lot of fans are pointing to like, hey, why didn't you go after Freddie Freeman? Or, hey, weren't you going to trade for Matt Olson? And uh, Anthony Rizzo, it sucks. But, you know, he's got to pick it up. I, I would say John Carlos Stanton second. But, like. It's just more of the same with Stan. You know he's going to get hurt. You know it's going to take him a while to get going. You know he's going to hit home runs, and that's about it. Okay. Now that you've ranted about one team in New York, let's move on to the other team in New York. LGM. Which one's more of a – yeah, LG L, 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 F M. FGM. L, L, On this show, we say let's fucking go Mets. Yeah, even though, even though Pete Alonso is in... not allowed to say it. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's he a no-no. He needs no -no. to say it because he can't hit anymore. On this show, he can say it. Yes. Uh which one's more disappointing? I mean, I, I did the Mets game last week, and they played the Dodgers, and they looked awful. They looked lifeless. They had, like, no hits, and it was just awful. The fans were all over them. Buck, we should have kept showing Buck, and he's Buck's like, oh, God, again. You know, it's, so so who, which, which one's more disappointing? The Yankees, the Mets, they both came in with huge expectations, huge payrolls, and they're both 
Not very good right now. The Yankees. Really? All things considered, this isn't one of the worst seasons for the Mets fan base. Like, it's disappointing when you win 101 games, you have the highest payroll in baseball history, and you do this. But right now, they're like, okay, we're seven games back. Maybe we make a run. But, like, it's not as disappointing as the Yankees who preach 27-time World Series champions, bringing a parade back to New York. Uh, Brian Cashman scratches his head in the offseason and says, how far did we get? Oh, well, if you let the fans tell it, like, you know, getting to the ALCS doesn't mean anything. Well, it doesn't mean anything if you're going to take two steps back and go from competing for the World Series to competing for a wild card. So even though the Mets fans are disappointed um, because this Steve Cohen era, right, he said he's putting a five-year window on winning a World Series. This is year three, and it doesn't look like they're going to win a World Series. These are Mets fans. They've been through a lot worse. Yankee fans have been through a ton of World Series. The expectation in New York with a generational talent like Aaron Judge, with arguably one of the best pitchers in baseball and Garrett Cole, the expectation is that we're in a championship window and this team should be competing for the division and then for the AL and then for the whole thing. So it's disappointing, even though they're three games above 500, you know, being three games out of the wild card spot, Yankee fans are ready to pack it up. Mets fans, they packed it up in June when they didn't win a series, and they kind of are looking at it like, ah, eh, if we figure it out, we figure it out. But typical Mets. Man, it's harsh. No, nah, it's harsh. New York, baby. It's just New York, you know. <laughs> yeah, and no, the expectation should be high because these teams. Well, 100%, yes. These but teams are spending. They're going for it. I just it, love and... how he's like, yeah, the Mets fans packed it up in June. They were like, we're done. <laughs> yeah, they went through a nightmare month. They couldn't win a series. They got swept by the Braves, and they were done. Then they went and lost to everybody else. So it was just like, oh, get rid of get rid of this guy, get rid of that guy. And then Steve Cohen had to come out and speak, and that helped them a little bit. But what I get from the Mets fan now is like, whatever happens this season, they don't care. They're already out. The Yankee fan right now is super disappointed because uh, they're going to just chalk the season up to judge being hurt. And we'll see what they do at the deadline. But there's a lot of Yankee fans that are already out on this entire organization, top to bottom. <laughs> All right, so I'm giving – let's finish with this. I'm going to give you the – drastic magic wand for the Mets or the Yankees and let you decide something drastic that you would want to do. Uh, you know, Options could include getting rid of a GM, a manager. It could include trading away a major player. What's one thing that you would do with, with one of those teams that would make a huge statement? Oh, well, for the Mets, it's to shed payroll. It's to get rid of Max Scherzer. It's to get rid of Cookie Carrasco's contract. Maybe move on from guys like, I don't know, Tommy Pham, Mark Canna, see what you can get. Like, I don't know if they're going to be sellers at the deadline because uh, if you listen to them speak, they talked about teams being eight games out and making a run for it and Buck Showalter being manager of the year and them, you know, still feeling like they have a chance to compete. So a uh, drastic thing would to be sell, sell off those pieces and look to the future, and I don't believe they're going to do that. With the Yankees, uh, it'd be the same thing. Sell, sell, sell. They're not going to sell. Neither team's going to sell. This is New York. They want to fight until they absolutely are mathematically out of it because if you do get postseason baseball in the Bronx or Queens, it's going to sell out. And it's all about the money, man. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. It's all about the cash. <laughs> I like it. Sold, dude. Hey, great to uh, talk to you virtually after seeing you in person, man. And uh, stay strong. Football season's there for you soon. <laughs> yeah. Just think you get to look yeah. forward to the Jets and how they can disappoint you soon enough. Yeah, hard knocks. <laughs> These guys don't want to be on hard knocks, but they got no choice, man. Hey, thanks for bringing me on. It was dope to see you guys out in Seattle. I told you, you guys have one of the best baseball podcasts going, and you ain't even been going that long, and you're rising up the ranks. So keep it up with the content and the guests, and I'll be supporting. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate you, man. One of the best Appreciate in the biz. It. You can follow Keith at Keith underscore McPherson. You can listen to him every night on WFAN. He does some stuff on Bleacher Report as well. Check out his Twitter for more information on everything that he's bringing to the table. Good juice.